Welcome back, it's Jess, and if you're new here, I'm a mom who creates content about coding, my journey through the tech industry, and my life in vlog form. So if that sounds like something you'd be interested in, please consider subscribing. CSS can be challenging, and I don't think we spend enough time talking about that, from positioning elements to centering a div, to using M's and rims over pixels. I know it can be a lot, so here are a few things that have helped me when it comes to learning CSS. So let's talk about selectors and specificity and just how important specificity is. We all know that CSS stands for cascading style sheet, which means that the styles are in a cascading manner. So typically the styles that are further along in the CSS style sheet are going to be the ones that take precedence over the ones that came before it. So knowing how the certain point system works in specificity has really helped me when it comes to knowing which styles are gonna take importance over others. So for instance, if I were to only use a P tag when I'm using my selectors and I don't include any class names or IDs, that one is gonna be a little less than if I were to use the bang important because a P tag would only give me one point. The important gives you a thousand. Classes give you 10, IDs give you a hundred. So you can see how the different scoring, the higher the number, the more important the style. Now this video is not intended for me to be able to go into a deep dive on this topic, but I did want to point out that this was something that I learned that actually helped me create better CSS because I was able to better pinpoint where styles might be overriding other styles. So some resources I recommend to get more information and more a deep dive on this topic of specificity is going to be one one of the videos in the 100 devs bootcamp which i'll link down below as well as the mozilla developer network or mdn documentation and utilizing ChatGPT and other ai services The second thing that has helped me along this journey has been reevaluating how I utilize tutorials. So before, when I first started learning how to code years ago, I would just watch a tutorial and do everything step by step, word for word, pause and play as I'm coding along with the tutorial. And what I realized is that by at the end of the tutorial, even though I have this great project that I can show, I don't really understand what happened because I was spending so much time listening and trying to pause and play just to get the exact code down. So some things I've been doing to combat this has been to find tutorials that are not solely based on building a project. So instead of finding and watching tutorials that strictly only build a project, now I try to use tutorials that are specifically focused on a topic. So Flexbox or Grid, and at the end of going over the concepts and how everything works, there might be a mini project at the end of the tutorial. What this allows for is for you to not only learn the concepts and the basics and how the thing works, but to also get the chance to take what you learn and immediately apply it to a mini project. So you're not just only seeing someone else go through the motions of how they think the project should be created, you're actually learning how and why certain things were used in creating that mini project. What I try to do is watch the entire video up into the project part of the video. That way I can actually understand what's going on. Sometimes I will take notes on my iPad. Sometimes I will just sit, listen, and watch. Once you get to the project portion of the video, after you've learned all the concepts, I recommend pausing on a part of the video where it shows you the actual design of what you're gonna be creating in that part of the video and pausing to challenge yourself to create the code and the solution for the problem before the instructor on the tutorial actually does it themselves. This will allow you to understand where you may have missed some things, what you actually picked up and understood from the concepts, and what you might need to work on in the future. I am a person who does naturally get intimidated by starting new projects and just jumping in and coding and getting my hands dirty. But once I start coding and I start to apply the knowledge that I learned, it is very satisfying and it is very exciting to know just how much I actually learn and see how it progresses and it also helps me with my problem solving skills. I do want to close this tip by saying that I don't think there's anything wrong at all with watching tutorials that are specifically project based where you are actually watching someone build from the ground up and not actually focusing on a specific tip. I actually have an example where I watched a video the other day that was two and a half hours long, but what I told myself was, I'm not gonna code along, I'm not gonna try to do this with her. I want to intentionally sit and listen. So I didn't even take notes. And I picked up so many things and connected so many dots from other learnings that I ch chose to go by. And it really helped with solidifying the knowledge that I had already picked up from other resources. 
So this leads me to the next part where I tell you guys about the resources that have really helped me along my coding journey, not only for CSS, but front end in general. And the first person I wanna mention is Jessica Chan, or you may know her online as Coder Coder. She actually just started another channel recently where it's just called Coder Coder Builds, and she just literally shows you how she goes about creating projects. That's actually the video that I was referencing in the last tip, the two and a half hour one. So I highly recommend her channel. I feel like she has this really great way of breaking things down in a really easy to understand way and you really get to understand why you do certain things and not just about certain things. So why use M's and rims over pixels? different things like that. I feel like she's also really good at explaining responsiveness and the importance of how to structure your code to get the most responsive websites. Speaking of responsiveness, that leads me into my next resource, which is Kevin Powell. If you have ever looked up anything to do about CSS, any questions you may have about CSS, I am sure you have come across Kevin Powell's channel, even if you don't remember it. Kevin Powell is an amazingly talented CSS pro and he knows everything about CSS and he probably has a video going over everything about CSS. So I highly recommend his channel to do with anything CSS and positioning because his whole channel is based off of getting you to love CSS more. How many times can I say CSS in one clip? <laughs> this next resource is one that I recently found. It is called Dev Dreamer and this channel is absolutely amazing. When I tell you that I have used so many resources to learn Flexbox and Grid and just by watching one video on both of these topics from this person's channel, I have learned so much more. I have been able to understand it a lot better and have been able to just go into a deep dive. So I would say Dev Dreamers Flexbox video along with something like Flexbox Zombies, it's an online game to learn Flexbox, has been a great combination and really understanding how Flexbox works and how to apply it to your projects. And of course, I have to mention 100 Devs. 100 Devs has been the actual core to my restart of my coding journey, to me learning exactly what I missed the first time in the gaps that I had as a self-taught learner. So I've learned a ton about HTML and how to structure it better and how that actually plays a core thing and how your CSS will even work. It starts with the HTML, in my opinion. So 100 Devs, like I always say, is a 100% free bootcamp. I do wanna say I am not sponsored by them. I always have to put that out there because I talk about them so much. I have no affiliation with 100 Devs. I just truly love this resource and it's 100% free. So again, everything will be in the description box below. And the last thing that I wanna talk about is actually applying your knowledge. You have to practice, you have to build projects, you have to use the knowledge that you got from other people and apply it so that you can actually learn how to code. There is no way that LeBron James, Steph Curry, whoever you wanna choose is going to be as great of a basketball player as they are if other people are shooting for them. If they never get out on the court, how are they gonna be who they are? Come on. So getting out there and practicing, applying that knowledge is key to getting better at CSS. Now, I'm not someone who is good at coming up with designs herself, so when I wanna really get in there and practice what it is that I'm learning, I don't wanna spend too much time thinking about designs. So what I use is friendandmentor.io. I have talked about that also on my videos. It is a free resource where you can go and look at designs, you can download the starter files, you can download the assets if you pay for certain versions of the platform, but it is a great place to go if you are like me and you don't wanna come up with your own designs and you just wanna hop straight in and start coding and applying what it is that you're learning. With Front End Mentor, you will be able to complete challenges that range from easy to hard. These can include projects that only require HTML and CSS, all the way up to projects that implement JavaScript. Once you complete the challenge, you're able to upload it to the platform through GitHub, and you're able to get input from other users on the platform of how you may have been able to do things better, or just telling you that you did a great job. So I really love Front End Mentor. Some other resources I highly recommend to use to get some hands-on practice are gonna be Free Code Camp, Code Academy, and things like Scrimba. And I did touch on Scrimba a little bit in my intro to HTML video, which I'll link in the cards and in the description box below. Now, I know I said the last thing was gonna be the last thing, but consider this a bonus if you stuck around in a video this long. That is going to be active recall and space repetition, and I get this done by using Anki cards. So if you don't know about Anki cards, space repetition and active recall, don't worry, I got you. I have links in the description below that are great resources to learn more about these topics. But basically what Anki cards are, are digital flashcards that help you with active recall and space repetition, which in turn help you learn knowledge better instead of trying to read and reread and cram things into your brain. It actually scientifically has a way of helping you retain the knowledge that you are learning. 
that's going to do it for the tips that I have when it comes to learning more about CSS and how to apply different knowledge to create better solutions for my coding problems and becoming a better overall front end developer. Hopefully you found something helpful in this video. And again, my name is Jess. I'm a mom who creates content about coding, my journey through the tech industry and my overall life in vlog form. So if that sounds interesting to you, please consider subscribing. And if this video was at all helpful, please consider liking the video. Thank you so much for being here. I love you. You know that. And I will see you in my next one.